In today's news, I've decided to give you the 11 African leaders who have refused to leave power. Hello, what's up? This is Ro Jamalovos here at Uganda News Updates. Just stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe, a comment and a like. Please don't forget. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Guinean President Alf Conde has been the last African head of state to seek the extension of his legal mandate, an initiative that has sparked protests in the country last week. If Alf Conde attempts to seek a third term in 2020, he would be inspired by a game manual established in Africa, where presidents in office have sought often successfully to stay in power by massaging, bypassing, or breaking laws, often intended to ensure democratic transfers of power. Below you will find details of how some of the oldest African leaders have managed to stay in power or are trying to do so, reducing the hope of dawn of democracy on the continent. In Guinea, we have President Arf Conde. Conde's second and final year term expires in 2020, but the 81-year-old leader has refused to rule out the possibility of standing for re-election. In September, he asked his government to examine the likelihood of drafting a new constitution, raising concerns about his candidacy. Alf Conde was elected for the first time in 2010. Now when we come to Burundi, we have Pere Nkurunziza. Nkurunziza who has been in power ever since 2005 announced in 2015 that he would run for a third term, which his opponents considered violation of the constitution which actually allowed only two terms. Since his re-election, hundreds of Burundians have been killed in clashes with security forces and a million have fled abroad. A referendum in 2018 of May overwhelmingly approved changes extending the presidential term to seven years. Under the new constitution, Nkurunziza is now able to serve two more terms, potentially extending his rule until 2034. The opposition rejected the rules and the United States said the voters had been intimidated during the electoral process. Now when we come to Cameroon, we have President Paul Bia. Bia, 86, and the oldest leader in sub-Saharan Africa took over the presidency in 1982. The National Assembly passed a constitutional bill in April 2008, removing the two-term presidential term to allow it to extend its term. He has won two elections since then but opposition candidates have described the elections as fraudulent. Chad, we have Idris Deby. Deby has ruled Chad since coming to power following a 1990 COP. A 2005 referendum removed a two-term limit on the constitution. Parliament approved a new constitution in 2018 reimposing the two-term limit, but it will not be applied retroactively, which means that Mr. Deby could serve two terms after the next elections in 2021, possibly up to 2033. When we come to Comoros, we have Azari Asaumani, the president, a former army officer, who took power for the first time in a COP in 1999 won a referendum in 2018 to extend the term 
of office and put an end to a rotation system. Powers between the three main highlands of the archipelago of the coast of Africa. The vote allowed him to run for two more five-year terms. The opposition rejected the referendum. When we come to Congo, Congo we have Denis Sassou. The constitution in the Republic of Congo was amended by the referendum in 2015, lifting the mandate and age limits that would have prevented President Sasao from representing himself. He won a new five-year term in 2016 elections, although the opposition rejected the results alleging fraud. Dennis Sassou has been in charge of the Congo since 1979, except for a five-year period from 1992 to 1997 when he lost the elections against PASCO. When we come to Djibouti, we have President Ismail Gwele. Legislators in Djibouti approved a constitutional amendment in 2010 that allowed Gwele, who has been in power since 1999, to run for a third term. He has already won two elections. When we come to Ivory Coast, we have President Arasen Kotara. Kotara, who has been in power since 2010, said the adoption of a new constitution in 2016 would allow him for a third term in the 2020 presidential race, as a new constitution would mean that the first two terms do not count. He has not yet said whether he will represent himself. When we come to Rwanda, Rwanda we have President Paul Kagame. In 2015, Rwandans voted to extend the two-term limit of the constitution. According to changes, Paul Kagame can hope to run for a term of seven years and two more five years theater, eventually to remain in power until 2034. Kagame, who won a third term in 2017, has been criticized for what human rights groups call widespread abuse, muzzling independent media, and the repression of the political opposition. He denies having committed wrongdoing. He came to power for the first time in 2000. When we come to Togo, we have President Faure Nasingi Bey. Togo changed its constitution in 2019 to cap the two-term presidential term of five years, apparently in response to opposition calls at the end of the political dynasty that began when Nasingi Bey's father took power at the end of the war, a cop in 1967. However, it does not take into account the three mandates that Nasingi Bey has already filled since he came to power in 2005, the last of which ends in 2020. He could therefore remain in power until 2030. Now, the last one is President Yori Kaguta Museven from Uganda, our very own. Museven has been leading Uganda since 1986, a clause limiting the number of terms that would have prevented him from seeking re-election was removed from the constitution in 2005. In 2017, legislators voted in favor of removing the constitutional limit of the age of a presidential candidate. Those have been the 11 African leaders who have refused to leave power. The only thing they want is to be in power, to be presidents for life. Please endeavor to leave a comment 
subscribe and uh, like on my youtube channel uganda news updates roger malobos bringing you all this thanks so much